A great architecture project is determined by its design brief. But how do you go about unpacking an architecture brief filled with jargon and complex theories? It took me six weeks of research and experimentation to find the golden nugget that eventually got my final year project an award. Many of you will start in the same place I did, the design brief. So watch carefully because I'm gonna share with you my three-step formula to get the same results. But first, let's rewind to the first day of my final year in architecture school. On the first day of Design Studio, you're handed the brief. It comes with a fancy title, images and references to books, films or social issues. I generally find it difficult to come up with new ideas on the spot. This is when I remind myself of the plant theory. Everything is a process. Just like planting and nurturing any kind of flower or tree, it requires different factors. One of these is time. First, you need to understand that there is absolutely no rush to come up with a project on the spot. I tend to cycle through a lot of bad ideas before I find my good ones. The first step of the formula is to echo. Just like with a plant, you want to find the right soil or environment within which your ideas are going to thrive and develop. Before you even start reading the brief, you need to figure out why and how it's been constructed this way. Usually tutors will take cues from their own work and interests and drop these into the brief. Sometimes it might relate to a current social issue or a concept that's worth exploring. To understand the context of the brief, it's really worth looking at past versions and compare them against the projects of previous years. Now that you've got a good understanding of previous projects and styles that have emerged from the studio, you can start to read the brief. Not just once, but multiple times. Read it over and over again till the words start to echo in your mind. I know it can be really easy to just skim through and leave it at that, but it's really worth taking a closer look at some of the points and words. If you have an online version of your brief, I would suggest pasting it into a document, setting the line spacing as far as it can go to leave room for annotation, and then printing it out and using a highlighter or a red pen to just comb through the text line by line. Here you're looking for keywords that appear often or underlining the ones you don't really know the meaning of. And this is really important because sometimes architecture briefs can be filled with jargon, so you need to make sure you get what things mean, otherwise you can interpret it in the wrong way. Even better if a word or a phrase has a double meaning because you can play with this later on. The next thing you want to do is to list out all the bits that caught your attention. You can do this in a mind map or a list or a table, whatever way works for you and however you visualize ideas best. Don't be afraid to get all of your ideas onto paper because even some of the weaker ones can really surprise you. I personally love using Notion to track all my projects. It's how I planned my thesis and stored all of my design research and notes each week. You can get a copy of my Notion dashboard through the link in the description. Step two is to extract all the good seeds that you want to plant and grow. Whether or not you choose to pursue these ideas is totally up to you. If you can see that there's a lot of research or material behind a topic, then this can play to your advantage as there's always something new to uncover. Alternatively, you should be able to identify ideas that don't really work as well, especially if you're not interested in them. If your tutors are offering alternative ideas or avenues, definitely explore them and assess whether they work or not. Before committing to an idea, remember that this is the point in your project where things aren't really set in stone yet. However, this is also the only time you're going to have to change your mind or try other things. So leaving the decision making till too late will eat into your design time. And on top of other modules and deadlines, it can get really tricky really quickly. Don't spend too long extracting ideas that it becomes the only thing that you do for the next few months, so try and use other media to make your process richer. This could be a documentary, lecture or podcast you find on the topic. It doesn't need to be a turning point, but it's more just to expose you yourself to other aspects that you might not have thought of. As you grow these idea branches, you'll begin to make connections within and sometimes this can naturally lead to a problem that you want to solve through your project. For me, the research into Mughal Chabags, a very precise architectural concept connected with the symbology and structure of Persian carpets allowed me to do this. After reading myths and origins of these topics, I realised I could propose a solution to cities that didn't use water sustainably enough. The very threads of my carpet became infrastructural elements that allowed water to move around various districts and be reused throughout. The theme of water was my initial starting point from the brief. The last step, and probably the most fun one, is to just explore. You'll obviously be doing this throughout the design project to find unique ideas and solutions, but this is where your creative method can really take the wheel. 
Exploring the brief means that you're allowed to move off and deviate from it, provided that you still have some kind of link or overarching theme that can lead you back to the brief. I think it's really important to do this because it answers the question of why have you designed this way, which often comes up during presentations or crits. Using the architecture brief as a crutch will really help you later on, especially if you want to test ideas or you want to experiment with smaller ideas that don't really make sense and you can basically connect them back to the brief somehow. When it comes to exploring the brief, try and set yourself a realistic time frame so that you don't spend too long in this design stage. I would say a couple of weeks is plenty. Eventually, you want to start creating. You can start by making collages or sketching abstract plans or even trying to find a site. There's no set way or chronological system of doing things in a design project, so this is really the time to take suggestions and guidance from your tutors as well. I really wish someone had told me how to approach a design brief back when I was a student. I found that having a strong base of research really helps throughout the entire design project because you can always go back at any stage and pick out something to explore and add in. To recap, the three-step formula is to echo, extract and explore. And if you've made it this far, why not consider subscribing? The design brief can be a really good way to start off your architecture project, especially if you make the most of it. Once you find that golden nugget that you know is going to help you move forward, it's time to move on. The rest of the steps for nurturing this plan are to just water it every single week. Having weekly discussions with your tutors should be challenging, not just productive. I spent a lot of this time just picking out bits and pieces of research or inspiration to help make my project seem a lot richer. I know at a first glance, the model seems really complicated and intricate, but I promise you that there are decisions behind each and every component. Looking back on the brief, I think I managed to stay true to the scale, level of design and requirements. I just had to take a very close look. I really hope this video has helped you to understand how to explore and unpack a architecture design brief. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'd love to hear from you.